You're listening to The Jim Price Show. When it was broken, and I'm listening to The Jim Price Show. I'm Jim Price and Jim Price Show Daily Update. I do appreciate you guys all tuning in. It is February 7th. It's a Monday, 2022. Thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate you guys all tuning in. Uh, a couple of things going on this last week, and I apologize. Uh, last Monday, we, we uh, did not have the right uh, recording out, but we did replay it throughout the week for you guys to catch you up on what actually happened last week. But replaying a lot of what we've been going through here and the continuation of the Potato in Chief Acting as if somehow he was just killing it with all of his decision-making skills. Now, with the full weight of the establishment propping this guy up, you think they would be able to make better decisions than some of the dumb stuff that they're actually pulling off. And in real time, I'm watching some of the dumbest things go around, but yet there are people still feigning to the idea, oh, the potato in chief, he's just, <laughs> he's amazing. And maybe they're using sarcasm there. Maybe they're making it sound like they really are in full support, and they're saying he's amazing when it's like, yeah, this guy is amazing. Like, what is he doing? I don't know. But anyway, that's their choice, and I'm going to tell you how I feel about it, and I'm watching it going, obviously, there are two separate governments. There's two separate things happening at the exact same time. Why would they go around showing you a movie studio to show you that the Potato Chief it really is not in the White House, that he really is at a movie studio? That he really is in a movie studio in Atlantic City, Atlanta City, uh, Atlanta, oh, whew, the city of Atlanta. <laughs> I am really screwing this up, Atlanta. So, uh, Georgia, this is he's in Georgia. He's not in Washington, D.C. By the way, Washington, D.C. is a foreign entity. Washington, D.C. is the District of Columbia. It does not belong to America. Too many times we're running around, and I don't think we really pay attention to all the little finer details in our little corporation of America that we run under, the gold fringe flag. So the problem is, is that when you have a gold fringe flag like this, this is a maritime law flag, meaning that you are no longer a constitutional republic. When you have the gold fringe flag like this, it says that you are under maritime law and that you do not actually live under the, under the Magna Carta. You actually live under duress. So anyway, these are little things I talk about, and I want you guys to understand that this is real. Now, I have behind me here, I have the Black's Law's Dictionary right here. Black's Law Dictionary, this is the fourth edition. It's a hardback copy. I actually made sure to buy this because I wanted to make sure to have for my own record, yeah, these faded tan paper that you can see the, the aging along the edge because of its, its aging, right? So this one was actually printed in 1951. Now, for a lot of people, that doesn't seem like a big deal. Why would I have this dictionary? Well, let me explain something to you real quick. Black Law's Dictionary is what the Supreme Court of the United States actually works under. Any other jurisdictions, any other court of law or court administration that you have in your city or your county, those are bar-associated court systems under the maritime law. Jim, what does that mean? What are you talking about? Well, in real time... I'm talking about the fact that you actually have a Supreme Court making decisions based on another set of rules. And then when you go into court systems where you feel like you can't get ahead, you feel like you can't get a fair shake, you feel like you're being victimized is because the court of law, the court administration that you go to is actually designed to do that very thing. The British Accredited Register, the Bar Association, the association that all lawyers, judges, DAs, prosecutors, all fall under, is the British Accredited Register. The extension of the crown into our country. It happened in 1871, and people don't pay attention to that. I digress. Washington, D.C., where we actually see it's the District of Columbia does not belong to America. It's actually a foreign entity. No different than the City of London is a foreign entity in England. No different than the Vatican is also a foreign entity in its own country. Again, these are separate countries or entities inside of other countries. And they have a relationship between the three of them. You need to look that up and pay attention to what's going on. But why do we see the potato-in-chief running around in his little, 
his little, uh, you know, secondhand store, thrift store table that he's supposedly sitting at, and but in, it's in the fake White House set. Oh, that's supposed to be for easier access to the president. No, it's not. No, it's not. Guys, you've been lied to, and you're being played, and this is the world we live in. Why are they showing you the crack in the wall right behind where he's sitting? Why are they showing you shipping containers in the window? Why are they showing you snow when there's no snow in Washington, D.C.? Why are they showing you vehicles that looks like a parking lot in the windows behind it? Because they're playing you. They're seeing how much they can get away with and see how stupid you really can be. They don't believe you're smart enough to pay attention. They don't believe you're smart enough to pick up on the details. And there are a lot of things that I actually have to be careful that I don't get caught up in because they're really good at doing this. This is what they're used to doing. They're used to giving us this act, this play, wag, the movie Wag the Dog. I, I advise every single one, go watch the movie Wag the Dog. You understand what your government's doing right now to you? Oh, Ukraine, Ukraine, Ukraine. <laughs> the potato-in-chief has a son called Hunter who is a energy advisor on a board of an energy company in Ukraine. John Kerry. He also has a kid on an energy board. Uh, let's see. Nancy Pelosi has a relative on an energy board in Ukraine. Uh, over and over again, we're seeing these connections between these companies in Ukraine and politicians in America. Why? Because it's a laundry money machine. It's how they've been doing it all along. No different than the book deals that never, ever print one book, but suddenly they sell, sell a million copies. This is the world we're living in, folks, where they're laundering money right in front of you. And let me let me point out something real quick. By the way, remember that a couple of years ago we heard this prid pro quo thing? Oh, prid pro quo, prid pro quo, quo pro quo, care care, care pro quo, decker Oh, I went on bended knee. Me, Nancy Pelosi, on bended knee, did ask the Lord, what shall I do, Lord? What shall I ever do with this president who has done a prid pro quo? You remember all that crap? By the way, we still released the phone call. By the way, we still saw there was no prid pro quo there. By the way, we do have the recording of Joe saying, Oh, yeah, I told him if you don't fire that prosecutor, you're not going to get the money. Huh. Yeah, well, that's called prid pro quo, by the way, guys. But isn't every federal dollar that goes to another country prid pro quo? We're going to give you this cash so you'll be our friend. We're paying for friends. Why don't we just stop paying for friends and why don't we just take care of ourselves and the rest of the world can go pound sand? We don't have to go out there and give these people anything. We don't have to manufacture in China. We don't have to manufacture in Philippines or Indonesia or India. We can just do it here in America all by ourselves. We have all the resources. We have all the technology. We have all the brains. Why don't we act like it? Because it's too easy to launder money through prid pro quo money. By the way, guys, every time we give money in foreign aid, it actually about 80% of that money comes right back to the person who wrote the bill to make sure that country got their money. That's why they pass these bills around to different senators and different house reps so that they get that money in return for giving it to that country. It's a real thing. The problem is, is this money laundering machine's been going on for so long, it's absolutely normal. Nothing to see here, folks. So why is it that Uncle Joe, oh, uh, Potato in Chief, doesn't want you in Ukraine? Why don't we want uh, old Pootie going down there and running around in Ukraine? Because if Ukraine goes back to, to Russia, which is what they were under for a long, long time, in which most people in Ukraine believe themselves to be a part of the Soviet Union, and then the European Union went there and took it away from the Soviet Union, so now uh, they want back. Well, what happens if Putty gets to go in there and be, uh, you know, Mr. Presidente over Ukraine? I know I'm using a lot of sarcasm here, so I hope you guys can keep up with this. Well, it's because if Putty goes in there and he gets to run things in Ukraine, he also gets to know exactly what's been going on in Ukraine, right? Just like the whole Kazakhstan failure, the whole Kazakhstan where the, the, the people took over the government, government and it was a big shiny object to keep you away from looking at what's going on in Ukraine. Just like in Afghanistan, why did we hurry and get out of Afghanistan? Because China was moving in to take over the second largest lithium mine on Earth. China was moving in and had a deadline to move in two days after we ran out of there. But remember, guys, again, this has been backed up by fact. This has been backed up by public or about um, reporting on the ground. We gave that equipment to the Afghan army. The Afghan army gave it to ISIS. 
Oh, but the potato chief had a huge victory in killing an ISIS leader this week. No, the ISIS leader killed himself and his children and other women because he didn't want to be taken by the American government. So he killed himself, or did he? Did he go ahead and kill other people, collapse the building in on himself, or wait, did he get away and then say that he was, oh, he was there? Again, the sleight of hand thing, guys, I'm telling you right now, it doesn't smell right. But the potato chief went on a victory tour. I've been out there doing a great job killing all the bad guys. Pew, 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 pew. Do you guys believe that for a half a second that then somehow this guy in his declined cognitive state is actually doing anything like that? See, the problem is, folks, shiny objects that keep you distracted from Ukraine. They keep you distracted from Kazakhstan. They keep you distracted from the Can Canadian trucker rally. They could be distracted from the American trucker rally. Trucker rally. This is the, all that the guys. The, the truckers are forming forming up already. They're already they're already on there. They're going to be going to D.C. here and just uh, they're they're planning this. They know what they're going to do. It's already going to happen. And by the way, doesn't it really really wink a dink? I'm sorry, but I'm in a mood today about this whole thing with all this, this stupidity and motion. But sure is a quinkadink that old uh, Trudeau. I go into hiding because those truckers are going to scare me, mommy. So he runs off into hiding. Mr. Fancy Pants himself runs into hiding because he's afraid of the truckers. Uh, a fringe group with only a couple members. I don't know about couple, but if I've seen the, I've seen the caravans, I've seen the the convoys. Uh, I don't think it's a couple trucks there, Mister Trudeau, and they're not a fringe group, by the way. They're the ones that feed you, dummy. Did you know that Texas and Canada actually almost have identical populations? Did you know that? Canada and Texas have almost the exact same population. I mean, we're talking just you know, it's like a couple hundred thousand off. It's not millions off. It's a couple hundred thousand. Canada has a couple hundred thousand more people than Texas. But Mr. Trudeau, oh, you got to lock down, and I bought 10 shots for every man, woman, and child in Canada. Why? Because he gets a kickback on every shot. But anyway, by the way, let's go back to the, the part where it's really amazing that he runs into hiding and then suddenly tests positive for COVID. But he's fully vaxxed, right? He's boosted and everything. Or is he? Or are the shots really BS? So did he really take them? Or are the shots BS? Which one is it, Trudeau? Did you fake your shots and didn't get them because you know it's going to cause AIDS? Or did you get them and the shots don't protect you? Which one is it? And then why are you in hiding? Why? What are you so afraid of, buddy? You're doing the right thing. You're doing God's work. You're protecting us from the big fart in the wind called the Mexican beer flu. But then why do we see one of your providences, one of your states, opening up next week? They're taking away all mandates, all shots, all vaccine passports, all of that. Because they don't believe in your crap and you're a weak leader. You've been shown to be weak and no one wants to follow you. So shut up, sit down, and let the men do their job. You and your little fancy pants. By the way, it sounds like today or this weekend, that you had a very conservative opponent rise up and announce his candidacy to run against you. I don't know how this is going to end, Mr. Trudeau. I don't know if you can stuff the ballot boxes enough to keep yourself in place. Maybe you should ask Castro, your daddy, how you actually do that for decades on end. But again, I digress. So what is the potato in chief doing right now? Oh, by the way, it's gun regulation time. What do you get here, Johnny? Oh, a bunch more bureaucracy to tell you whether you can own a gun or not. Well, that's what our potato in chief thinks is so vitally important in these days. Not worrying about the millions of people that are not working. Millions of people that are not on the payroll anymore. You know, under the uh, Uncle Barry, you know that guy? Uh, he was the Mr for the first half black president we've ever had. Uh, yeah, uh, Mr. Barry. Um, yeah, uh, he had the lowest participation in American history, lower than the Great Depression, meaning that the percentage of people working 
was lower than the percentage of people working on, in the Great Depression. But he had the greatest economy, Jim. You're so full of it, you don't understand. Did he? Or was he lying to you? But now, the potato in chief wants to set all kinds of new records. And here we go. The greatest lack of per participation in American history. That trophy now belongs to the potato in chief. The potato in chief now has that honor. He took it from Uncle Barry. Well, how dare he? But that's what kind of leadership we're under. We're seeing the collapse of the United States dollar. The United States dollar is being uncoupled from all kinds of different exchanges around the world. People are walking away from the United States dollar as if it's got, it's got the disease. It's got the heebie-jeebies. It's got the ugh. Countries are decoupling from the petrodollar, the American dollar, is about as fast as they can. Why? Because they see it crashing. They see the... the the crash of the American dollar. They see what's coming. The inflation that we're under right now, we're under double. We have doubled inflation. What we were paying for a year ago was a dollar, and now this year it's $2. It's not 5%. It's 5% per month of growth. 5% on top of 5% is 10%. 5% on top of 10% is 15%. 5% on top of that is 20%. 5% on top of 20% is 25%. And you see the math here? But this is the world we live in where they're being told, oh, it's only 5% and it's just 5% this month. It's not a big deal. What are you so worried about? This is crazy. Why is this so crazy, man? Then why are we paying so much at the pump? Why is food running up so fast? Why is cost of goods going up so fast? Why is it we're running short on supplies? Why do we see container ships sitting on our shores, which actually could be missile bases instead of actually goods or products? See, the problem is, is the potato chief showed exactly how weak he is, but exactly at the same time, China is now taking people out of the Olympics. Their military is resting and detaining press and athletes during the Olympics. That's happening in real time. Because the Chinese people will not take you talking against them. They will not take it. They'll just come and arrest your ass and throw you in jail or kill you. And they don't care what it looks like or sounds like because you're gone. And then, by the way, in China, when they get rid of you, they don't actually just get, get rid of you. They get rid of you and your family and anybody may, who may have known about you. They eliminate them all. That way, you just don't exist anymore. They don't care. They don't care. It's easier to kill you than deal with you. The Chinese policy. Ta -da, ta da See, the problem is the Chinese people are not the problem. It's the communist, the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP. See, there's the difference. A political party that's in charge, no different than the socialist or the communist party, which we call the Democrats now. They've actually shown their hand exponentially that they're not about equality. They're not about equal opportunity. They're not uh, anything about making sure the small man gets a hand up. They're actually showing their absolute playbook to you. And if somehow you're not seeing the evils behind them, the Baal worshipers, the Satan worshipers, the Moloch worshipers, what do you, what do you, you got mud in your eyes? Are you purposely looking the other way? Are you going out of your way to make sure that you don't understand? How can you do that? You're purposely making sure to look the other way as they're killing people with the old jabberoonie. Now we're finding out about microcarditis. Now we're finding out about AIDS. Now we're finding out about blood clots. Now we're finding out about graphene hydroxide. By the way, excuse me, I may have in the past told you it was graphene oxide. I'm sorry, it's graphene hydroxide. That's why they weren't correcting us because we didn't quite know exactly what we were talking about, but now we do. Graphene hydroxide is actually what is floating around in the old in the arm. Why is it we're seeing people become magnetic? Why are we seeing people uh, being picked up as a Wi-Fi or a Bluetooth connection? Because, guys, this is what they're doing. In real time, they're doing this to us, and the potato in chief is going to tell you it's about gun safety, and he's going to tell you about how he killed the ISIS leader. Well, the ISIS leader didn't exist a couple years ago. Why do we have an ISIS leader? 
already, Uncle Joe. And why do you want to get rid of that guy so bad? What does he know about you? Is he getting ready to talk? Did he say something? But I get, I mean, you know, what, what do I know? Why would I be talking about this? It's so crazy. Or am I crazy? See, the problem is, is that we see this stuff going on where we're seeing the unemployment numbers, the real unemployment numbers that are people are out of work. But then all of a sudden we went from people, we lost 300,000 jobs in one week to suddenly we gained 400,000 jobs. No, we didn't. They're lying to you. And that's the sad part is that we do not have a government that is actually out there for your best interest. And yet in a bill, in, in your article, your, your um, constitution, in your Bill of Rights, it says all political power is inherent in the people. And all free governments are found on their power. Who is the people? We are the people. A constitutional republic is the people first. The people come first. They are not led or coerced or guidelined or lawed by a government. They are telling the government that they want certain things and that is it. And the government does not question them. We are the power. All free governments are founded on their power, on our power. We the people's power. And it's in your Bill of Rights, but yet you don't read that, right? You don't read it because they told you not to. They told you to quit paying attention to that. Don't look at those things. Look at me. Look at me. Pay attention to me. I am your leader. Don't look at the Bill of Rights. Look at me. I'm your leader. Don't look at the Bill of Rights. I'm your leader. I'm leader. Don't. No, you're my servant. The Constitution in every state is reciprocal one to another. It means all constitutions are the same, and they all represent all of us. And the federal government holds those up and says all state constitutions come first. But they don't teach you that anymore, do they? They don't teach you about your liberties and your freedoms. They teach you to subjugate yourself, to give their power over to them, that the cops are the most powerful thing on earth, that you shall give in, you shall comply. Where is your card? Where is your, where is your registration? Where is your papers, sir? You cannot go into Applebee's and freely eat as an American. You have to show your papers to eat second-rate food. See, the problem I have is that we are, we're, not, we're not paying attention to the demons and the, and the, uh, the, the Satan worshipers and the manipulators right in front of us. Right in front of us are the answers, and we're ignoring that, And which means what? That you're complicit in that? You're participating in their crimes? Or is, when is it going to be your time to stand up? When are you going to have enough? When are you going to stop? I wrote a piece back in October of 2022, and it has become so very relevant in this time. And I thought it was very relevant at the time I wrote it. October 2nd of 2022, I wrote this piece. Say her name, America. Her name is America. She is freedom. She's the only place on earth, past, present, or future, that has ever been or ever will be free from tyranny. But tyranny is running wild right now, isn't it? She has bled, cried, and died for each of us. Over her beautiful hills and dales, she has prepared for us a home we must earn. This home is built with honor, dignity, peace, and the pursuit of happiness. She is here so you so I'm sorry, she is here so we can rest our weary heads, for freedom is never free. We must battle against those that are evil against those who wish to bring freedom to her knees. Each day we struggle against those who take away freedom for the sake of safety. Sounds familiar? To be free, you must practice bravery. Bravery is not born in each of us. Selflessness, I'm sorry, selfishness, selfishness, inward thinking, selfishness is the root cause of all evil in our hearts. We must practice selflessness, outward thinking, to achieve bravery. We must be brave and hold dear the hopes and dreams of a nation. When those with evil in their hearts choose to bring harm to those who are not brave, it is the duty, nay, the honor of those that can to stand strong and resolute until others can join the fight for freedom. No one has ever rang the bell of freedom without the fear of loss. This loss can be of your individual freedom, your individual liberty, 
your pursuit of your happiness, or even your life. No one will ever be granted, I'm sorry, no one will ever be guaranteed the perfect outcome, rather the best outcome for the effort you put forth. When the duty of freedom calls, how will you respond to her? How will you rise up to meet her? How will you create a better world for those that do not know or understand freedom? How will, you, how will your actions bring those real values of freedom into the hearts of many? Whether in this life or at the judgment seat of Christ, you will have to answer this question. Were you a good and faithful servant to freedom and her cause? Did you fight tirelessly for those who could not against those evildoers willing to destroy freedom? What did you do when freedom called your name? Guys, this is the world we live in, and it's your world, and it's how you want the future to look is how you're going to act now. If you stand up with dignity and honor and selflessness and you think of others before yourself, the things that are happening now will transition to some most amazing freedom and the most amazing liberties that we've ever, ever seen on earth. And that will spread like wildfire, but if you give in and you cower and you walk away and you turn your head the other way, this time will turn into a thousand years of darkness and we will suffer and our children's children will suffer in ways we will never understand. It is our time to stand up. It is our time to be free. It is our time to be those people in history. What an exciting time to be a part of this. What an exciting time to say that we can be those that change the trajectory of tyranny, of, of uh, making sure that we're on a freedom's path that we fight for freedom every day because freedom is never free. And no one's carrying around with a big bucket of freedom saying, here, here's some freedom. You want it? Because freedom has to be earned. Freedom has to be fought for. Because evildoers are looking for every avenue, every little crack to be able to go in and rule over you and take away your freedoms and your liberties. So, folks, if you have any questions or comments for me, Jim Price at thejimpriceshow.com. Uh, my website is thejimpriceshow.com as well. So Jim Price at thejimpriceshow.com is my email. The website is thejimpriceshow.com. Please look me up. If you have any questions or comments, please get back with me. Remember the 10% you do for your neighboring community, city, county, state, the federal government. The more you do for them, the less they have to do for you. So let's learn how to be selfless because the world will be a far better place. Hold the line. Hold fast. Do not give up. Do not give in. We will win. I promise you. This is the world that we want going forward, and we have to be the difference makers. So please think of it in that way. Thank you so much for you guys listening. I appreciate everything you guys are doing. You guys inspire me every day. I'm Jim Price, the Jim Price Show Daily Update. You guys all be good to each other out there, and I'll see you guys next Monday. Bye-bye.